Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. Today we're going to look at using Inkscape to drive a CNC-based laser cutter. In our case, it's going to be a 2-watt attached to a CNC milling machine. So uh, looking for an easy and cheap way to convert uh, vector images, uh, etc. to G-code. And the way to do this is really with uh, Inkscape. Inkscape is a free software um, vector drawing program. There's a lot of great tutorials on the internet and YouTube about Inkscape. So I'm not going to go into how to use Inkscape. However, what I'm going to do is cover out installation of Inkscape, um, the JTEC Photonics plugin to create the G-code, and how to set this all up and get to your first laser cuts. Uh, really simple and easy to do. So the first thing we do is go to the Inkscape.org website, and you can see the address up here, Inkscape.org. Uh, you know, English download. I'll have a link to all this, but if you just go to the main Inkscape site, it'll take you to the download page. So in short, here we pick the version that fits for us. Uh, you know, um, I'm using the 64-bit Windows version, but if you have 32-bit, if you have previous. Uh, there's also uh, Apple versions. I, I have to be honest, the Apple version doesn't work so great because uh, it, it uses the old X windows. Um, I haven't been able to get it to work, but it's not saying that is isn't possible. So I'm using this on a Windows machine. Uh, the next piece we need to do is we need to go get uh, over to J jtechphotonics.com and get the Inkscape plugin. Uh, now remember, Inkscape's free plugin is free and that's what's really great about this and it really is just a simple way to go about this so again I'll have links to this in the uh, in the notes below and on the website uh, so you don't have to focus on getting this but if you want to it's just jtexphotonics.com and you can go to the plugins page they do a very good job of explaining um, the different pieces and we'll talk about these a little bit in the video more so and I'll show you some of the things that I found um, and then what we'll do is, uh, oh, uh, before we move on, I wanted to mention they also have a very nice tutorial page also. So um, you can kind of follow through this and, and they'll walk you through how to do it. So if there's any further questions, uh, I'm just going to do it in the video because it really clarifies a couple things. And we'll take a look at the code that generate is generated by this and I'll help help you sort some of this out. So now that we got we have both of these downloaded, what we want to do is to go to their respective folders. So here you can see I've downloaded Inkscape. All you do is double click on it. I'm using the Windows installer package for the 62 64 bit version. Sorry, um, you know it's just a straightforward install, nothing major. Now once it's installed, once Inks we finish installing Inkscape, you want to expand the uh, JTP underscore laser underscore tool version one underscore four package and you get this obviously subdirectory. Now what's a little bit confusing from the instructions is it says to copy this over. Now uh, and if you look in where they want you to copy it, there, there's there's you know some various file folders in there too and everything. So it kind of seems like they want you to copy this over. Wrong. Uh, what you need to do is go into the folder itself and then copy these four files and just say, you know, well, basically we just drag these over, drag and drop them right into the directory itself. And this is going to be the Inkscape Share Extensions directory. Now, I've already copied these, so I'm just going to say copy them and replace them again. And also, as, as I've already mentioned, and in the instructions for me, it's C, Program Files, Inkscape, Share, Extensions. So this is where they're going to go to, and they're going to go directly in that file, not into a subfolder of that file. And basically, you're done. You've now installed the plugin for Inkscape. It's a beautiful thing. So uh, with that done... Let's just jump over to Inkscape. So this is your basic Inkscape um, uh, working area. So now, again, there's tons of tutorials on Inkscape on, on the web and YouTube, so I'm not going to go into this. So I'm just going to show a, a simple example. So the, for our example, what we're going to do is select a, a rectangle or a square, and just, just draw a rectangle or semi-square on the page. And again, 
uh, up here in the attributes there's going to be no fill um, you know stroke we'll just leave it set as it is in stroke style it, it comes it's set at uh, 1.6 width it really doesn't matter the width um, just that it that, that it does have some width so now what we're going to do is we're going to again highlight this and then we're going to go up here to path and then we're going to say stroke to path and then then down here if you notice what we've done is we've given it an origin um, so let's zoom in a little bit um, so hopefully we can see this down here so see we have an origin and I can't remember what the, this number is for but but the critical part is the origin so this is our origin and then we are going to move to here cut the square and voila all right so now that we have this set up as a path which is very important we're going to go to extensions now if you go here and you look at extensions you kind of scratch your head and goes where's the JT tech photonics plugin what you have to do is you have to go down to generate g-code and you'll see it under that uh, subheader you'll see it here and you just click on it so what we have is now the uh, the little pop-up box that we saw from the last time around uh, when we're on the JT Photonics website. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to enter our laser commands to turn the laser both on and off. For me, I'm using Garble. I'm using the spindle uh, direction pin, pin 13, in the version 9 build with pulse width modulation on. So this means I need to use uh, M03, M04. Your application might be different. This is what's really neat about this plugin is it allows you to provide the the M code for the on and off uh, function. So if you're using uh, say the older version of Garble, uh, you can pick you can pick uh, you know the commands I forget what they are for uh, spindle enable but uh, I think it's M5 and something else. Anyways pick your pick your on offs the next thing we're going to do is travel speed. Now travel speed is the speed at which your machine will travel with the laser off. This is a rapid so uh, again you can see 3000 millimeters per minute it's going to move rather quick and that's okay because we just want to get it around the working surface as fast as possible when we're not doing any cutting or, or any machining. However more importantly is the next number which is basically laser speed millimeters per minute now this is going to be a little bit of trial and error on your part and and, and also depending upon what you want to do or or as an engrave or cut obviously if you're going to engrave you can move much faster than if you're going to cut and it is also going to be dependent upon the power of your particular laser so you might have to play around with it. I'm going to be using a two two watt blue laser. So 100 millimeters for what I'm going to do is not going to be bad. Now again, you know, depending upon your material, the power of your laser, you're just going to have to be trial and error. This is basically feed rates. So we're going to keep this as it is. The next one is laser power. If you're using pulse width modulation, then you will set this number to whatever um, percentage of laser power you want and we'll take a look at this in the G code how it comes out with my setup it's either on or off I'm not feeding pulse with modulation back into the controller at this time I will in the future so I'm just going to leave this at 100 it, it, for practical purposes since it's on and off and it's going to be triggered with a relay it's not going to make a difference so just leave it at 100 now another very important setting is this one right here power on delay milliseconds so What's going to happen is when the M3 command is issued to turn on the laser, it's going to start cutting. However, it's not going to have cut through the material at the instant it has been turned on. It may take a, a few milliseconds to actually cut. And you want this to actually cut the material before you start moving. So if you were to say set this to zero, the machine will start moving the second the laser is turned on and you'll have a tab appear it will not have had time to cut through the material and so you're going to want to set this to allow the laser to cut make its initial cut and then the machine start moving the default is a hundred I think for my application that I'm going to do today I think that's plenty uh, again this is something you'll have to experiment with 
the next piece is passes. Uh, with passes, this is the number of times you would like to repeat the machine circling or completing the given path. So, it would, which is really great, especially if you're using a lower powered laser and you want to, you know, cut through something. It may take multiple passes, so it doesn't mean just because in one pass you can't do it. Um, you know, so again, with my two watt laser, you know, eighth inch balsa wood is, is possible. Um, might take me a couple passes to do it, but I, I can still cut it and I can probably even cut a little thicker on the balsa wood. But again, the more passes you make, the, the greater opportunity you have to cut thicker material. Uh, so really the number of passes in conjunction with the speed of the laser, you know, how many millimeters per minute and everything else, you know, is a nice argument to, to give opportunities to cut through a lot of materials which might not have been possible given, you know, the smaller laser. Now to add to this, which makes this even better, is the following command. Now most lasers are two-dimensional in the fact that it's an X and Y axis, which is... Um, uh, used now and, and, and the Z is fixed uh, in, in the case of the, the what I'm going to be doing on my probiotic um, uh, V90 is, is I will have a Z access so one of the things to understand especially if you're new to lasers lasers have a very shallow focal length and especially a low power laser so if you're not right at that sweet spot and I mean it, it's, it, it's tens of thousands of an inch then you're wasting energy, it, it's not going to cut like it should, etc. So being able to move this through the material in the z-axis is important. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back here for a second and, and show um, one of the things I want to do is cut corrugated cardboard. And as you see in the corrugated cardboard, you know, it, it, it's, it's um, you know, eighth of an inch thick or so. Uh, and so you see you have you have multiple pieces and I'm kind of focusing on this piece right here so you have basically three pieces to this cardboard you have the top piece you have the center piece and then you have the bottom piece and you have to cut through all three of these now the focal point will fit in the top piece you know just perfectly but then once this is cut through the laser is going to be misfocused for these other two so by uh, allowing the z-axis travel down, you're moving that focal point down and you're cutting this cardboard uh, very cleanly through all three. So you can set up, say, three passes at three different z-depths. And, and basically what happens is with um, this, this setting, you can tell it how much to move. So if that second one is say a half a millimeter from the first one, you put in a half a millimeter and then each Z step for each three passes will be one half a millimeter deeper. Again, very important and allows us to cut materials that we probably couldn't cut before because of our weaker lasers. We can cut them by overcoming this mechanically. Now, finally, um, the directory where you want to place these uh, files, your resulting G-code, um, the name of the uh, base file name of the G-code, which should be put out there, and then add numeric suffixes so it becomes, you know, uh, this plus zero plus one plus two. You kind of get the idea. Live preview. Um, this is supposed to generate a live preview of the output. Um, doesn't seem to work I don't know maybe I don't have the right Python packages installed I haven't investigated it hasn't really been an issue but if you check it it doesn't seem to matter so now once you have all this you need to click apply and and sometimes you have to click apply twice I'm not sure why to get it to to generate the file however if you saw that box flash up here that's what you want to see and then what happens is if we go to it, we now see over here we have um, the uh, the file itself. So if we double click on it, we open it up in an editor, and we now look at the G code. What we what we see is is so we start out with the M04. Remember that's my code to stop the laser. So this just up front make sure the laser is turned off uh, because I may have turned it on for focusing and set up at a lower power. And so 
for the first move it makes sure the laser is off and then it does some of its other things it starts its move and then we can see here it issues the m03 command turning on the laser it also issues an s254 command now this goes back to the pulse width modulation i was mentioning so if you do have pulse width modulation enabled it will now turn the laser to its maximum power or if you had say set it to 50 percent it would be half of that so that this is where in the code it, it's controlling your laser as on this line now we go through our standard moves all the way down through here then you notice we hit another s uh, an m4 turning the laser off and then we issue an S0, basically turning pulse, pulse with modulation to zero. And then we make our another move, and then we turn it back on. Now, I'm kind of interested why that this is doing this for the particular square like this. So I'd be interested to see when the machine runs um, why it's like this. Um, just looking real quick I don't see any z-axis moves so it seems to be just going through uh, the pattern so uh, anyways to be interesting and then finally down here at the bottom uh, it turns it off again and returns it home so uh, pretty simple code we're gonna run this code on the machine in another video uh, but the one thing I did is is I, I've been looking for th there are a couple different laser plugins out there and I've been looking at the various plugins for a while and the different things this one just really seemed to be the most simplistic uh, to get the job done and really is CNC and make hobbyists and things like that that's what we're really looking for at least I am uh, something which allows me to uh, take an idea or a concept and turn it into a product as quick as possible and, and this this really is has been an interesting way in a very simple way and especially since I don't have to use fixed uh, G codes for example the M3 and M4 uh, a lot of stuff is hard-coded a lot of people are using um, uh, separate Python codes to modify their G code. This just does it. It's very clean. So hopefully you've liked this video. If you did, please click the like button down below and share it. Also, I'm going to be doing far more videos on sort of laser setups and things like that. I think uh, uh, there's, there's not a lot of stuff I've seen on the internet with lasers. Uh, you know, full disclosure, you know, there, I mean, it, a lot of safety concerns with it. You need to be safe with the laser, a lot of risks because there's a lot of bouncing light. You know, it's a very intense light, can do a lot of damage and harm at a distance, so you do need to be careful. However, I think there's a lot of maker opportunities for utilizing a, a laser, and that's one of the things I tend to explore in both building my own machine and adapting some of my other machines to use uh, laser technology. So anyways, look forward to seeing you in a 